Hi, my name is Tyler Ducharme and I'm a technical marketing specialist working with the Insight product team here at Cognex. Today, I'd like to walk through how to set up an Insight 2800 application with our brand new VDEL classifier tool. In terms of my setup, I have my Insight 2800 smart camera equipped with an integrated light and lens connected to 24 volt power. With our new VDEL classification tool combined with the Insight 2800 smart camera, I'll show you how we've made vision simple. Okay, so this is the Insight Vision Suite software that we use to set up our Insight applications. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm already connected to uh, the Insight 2800 smart camera. Uh, first, we will uh, select our source. In this case, we're just gonna use uh, the camera itself. Um, and all we need to do is set up our lighting and focus with uh, two simple clicks of a button. So all I have to do is click Optimize Lighting. You have a nice uh, bright image and then click focus to get our image in focus. So the first step with training the classification tool is setting our region of interest that we want to inspect. Once I've uh, configured the region, I just press okay. And what the tool is gonna do is actually show me the two default classes, which are OK and NG, which means not good. The tool will automatically assign a label to OK as the first image. So I actually have my OK part under, uh, under the camera now. One other thing I wanna mention is that what if we have the part not in the image at all and there's no part? In this case, the beauty of our tool is that we can actually add a, another class and we, can act, and we can call it no part bring that class in and we'll train it um, as we go. So let's start by collecting some images. So this is our you know, good part. I can move it around the, the image a bit, trigger the camera. And this is again, still an, an okay part. So all I have to do is press the okay button. And you'll see that my number of images will increment here and I've actually trained that image. So what you'll notice is that we have this green ring around a yellow circle. The yellow circle indicates which class is being predicted and the, the green ring is the, the level of confidence. In this case, uh, just because I've just trained this, uh, the confidence score is at 100%. All right, let's bring in some bad parts, the broken seal. Trigger the camera. And we haven't trained any bad parts yet, so the tool is having some trouble predicting you know, what class this belongs to. In this case, it has no confidence in, in any of the classes that we have so far. But once we start to train, you'll see that our confidence starts to shoot up to 88%. And then lastly, we'll do the no part, which is pretty straightforward. Take an image of no part, train, and that's looking pretty good to me. I do wanna uh, mention the model health metric here at the bottom. So we use this model health metric to decide when our application is ready to be deployed. Rule of thumb, over 80% and stabilizing as we add more images is a good rule of thumb to know when to deploy your app. Okay, I wanna add a couple more images here. So I'm gonna go into this edit classes window and I've actually collected a sample of images beforehand, so I can actually import them into the tool. Select the folder. Great. So we've brought in a total of 10 images. And now you can see that each of these all has a uh, prediction with the green ring. So let's actually select all of these. It's really, really simple to just label all of these at once. All we have to do is click and drag into the class that we want to train them. These all seem to be okay. Again, we can just select them all and click and drag them right into the class. Okay, so let's get back out of edit classes. So as you can see now, our, our model health is up at 99%. We've trained you know, eight images for NG, two images for no part, and nine images for okay. Uh, so I think this application is ready to deploy. So let's actually go and test it. I'm gonna put the device online. We have no part under the camera now. Let's place a part under. We've got OK, we can move it around the image, and you can see that our confidence is very, very high. We can rotate the part, looks great. Now let's put, a, let's put NG under there. Again, we can rotate the part, move it around, looks great. Maybe add some you know, more variation. Again, we're still properly classifying. Yeah, and I think that looks great. So the last thing I wanna show you is um, actually creating a runtime HMI display for users who might be on you know, the factory floor uh, monitoring this, uh, this device. So let's go into the HMI step. 
And luckily for us, um, a lot of the information um, that you know a user might want to want to know is is already kind of shown at default. We have you know the region of interest uh, where we're actually inspecting the part, uh, the predicted class on the image itself, as well as in this uh, gray box here. Um, but let's say maybe a user wants to know how much uh, how much confidence the the tool has in its prediction. So all we have to do is go into this dropdown, um, and we have all these different properties of the tool. We can find predicted class score, which is the percentage. And we can just bring that right into our display. Again, we can go back online, show an OK part. And now we have um, our predicted class confidence score as well. Here's NG. Great. I think that's about it to set up the, uh, the HMI display. To recap today's tutorial, first we connected to our device in Insight Vision Suite. We then set up our image in two simple clicks. We brought in our VIDI EL classifier tool and created three classes, OK, NG, and No Part. We took multiple images of each type of part and assigned a class to the proper images. Then once our model health was over 80% and stable, we then ran our job and ensured the parts were classified properly. Lastly, we created a very simple HMI display uh, with the predicted class exposed, as well as the confidence per percentage of the predicted class exposed as well. From here, we could further set up our HMI with more information from other tools or more data to help line users track device performance. We could also set up communications to interface with factory PLCs or other devices on the factory floor.